вообще во многом ну, создал такую революцию даже в отношении музыки, танца, звучащего слова, вот этой перформативности в Индии. Но а как, какого-то рода понимания или влияния, вы немножко вот упоминали о вли, роли и влиянии музыкальной жизни, да? но как бы как это вот если объяснить да, двумя словами, то есть какого рода влияние вот это вот театральности, перформативности в творчестве Тагора, как, какого рода знания или какого рода впечатления были вот в Праге, вот, вообще в Чехословакии? Спасибо. В первый ответ профессору Сребрянному о Токар Бжезина. О Токар Бжезина. И о, вот его да. сравнивали с Тагором, да? Да, да. Его mm -hmm. поэзию. Mm -hmm. Это уже на английском mm -hmm. месте это сравнение. Mm -hmm. И э, э, в театре э, э, несколько э, э, Some of the Plays of My Tagore, э, они были в, уведены в Национальном театре в Праге э, несколько разы, э, немного разы, и э, в в союзе с его с его connection with his visits in Prague. So there was this reason to, to sort of show his, his, his plays and he was also present at one of the shows. But they didn't have too many, they, they were not screened, showed too many times. But in spite of that, there are, there are Uh, there's evidence that uh, his uh, plays are being uh, up to date, staged sometimes by school theaters, by small scenes, but you can't say that his uh, plays would have uh, great impact on uh, Czech theater productions. Uh, it's usually a personal effort and uh, mm, That, that some, some uh, note in this particular play strikes the, uh, the, uh, the director or the, the collective. So there's are individual initiatives, but you can't say that there is any lasting impact which would be possible to uh, sort of analyze on Czech theater as such. Большое спасибо, коллеги. К сожалению, доктор Мартин Гжибек, к сожалению, у нас время переходить к следующему докладчику. Поэтому... Значит, следующий наш докладчик – Камакши Баласубраманием, майстор Индия, то есть это учитель и друг Александра Михайловича в течение многих лет. Тема доклада – изучение тамильского в Институте восточных языков в начале 70-х годов. Прошу, пожалуйста, Камакши. Здравствуйте, слышно? Да. Так, здравствуйте. Доклад мой имеет два названия. Первое, from novice teacher to from novice teacher and native speaker. The second subtitle is from self doubt to knowledge. Уважаемые индологи, коллеги и друзья Александра Михайловича Дубьянского, уважаемая Ольга па Ольга Павловна, все собравшиеся ученые и организаторы этой конференции, я при приветствую вас всех от имени Индии, страны, которая объединяет нас своей древней историей и языками. Сегодня мы отмечаем этот день чтобы почти память и жизнь знаменитого индолога и филолога Александра Михайловича, который был другом всем нам здесь, ментором многих в этой замечательной компании. Я благодарю организаторов за оказанную мне честь быть среди вас. Я присутствую здесь не как индолог, а как одна из тех, кто знал Александра Михайловича 
когда он еще был учеником тамильского языка, и я, как ни странно, была его учительницей. Да, действительно странно. Позвольте мне рассказывать вам о тех днях в прошлом, полвека назад, когда тамильский язык пустил сильные, сильные корни в МГУ. Продолжаю по-английски. The legendary and distinctly self-willed Anatoly Tikhonovich Aksyonov gave me my first teaching job in 1969 at the Institute of Oriental Languages at Moscow State University to teach spoken Tamil. I knew that I was no Tamil language specialist, yet I was in no position to express any hesitation to Anatoly Tikhonovich because as those of us who were fortunate enough to have been mentored by him would know, when he assigned you a duty, you just said yes, and then wondered about your wisdom, or at least I often did. I could speak for hours about that officer and gentleman, Anatoly Tikhonovich Aksyonov, who along with my father was a major reason why I found myself at MGAU in 1967 at the philology faculty in the Russian division. In 1967, <clears throat> perhaps the first and even only Indian woman to have the distinction of having a degree in Russian philology from MGAU. Anatoly Tsikhanovich hired me to teach three sessions every week. I was to offer practice in spoken Tamil for the one and only batch of students at that time specializing in Tamil. These students were all in the fourth year of their five-year study program, and I was a third-year student of Russian philology. Now for a digression, or perhaps this digression ought to be the main theme of my presentation. I have to spend a little time describing what spoken Tamil is and what knowledge one needs to have in order to be able to teach it to non-native learners. Many of you present here are Indologists and are well aware that Tamil is known for its diglossia. How does a teacher of Tamil approach the teaching of spoken or colloquial Tamil. To begin with, the written form of formal Tamil or LT, literary Tamil, let's call it, um, is itself a complex phenomenon given that traditionally it has been extremely formal or high style oblique literary. There are ways to write informally in Tamil in the sense that um, in the sense that the lexical items can be more contemporary and include words borrowed from other languages in main English, for example, but that's a more recent trend. Strange as it might seem, until even about 20 or 25 years ago in my memory, much of the writing in newspapers and magazines in Tamil tended to be stiffly formal in style. That exact stiff formal style of writing was used in news bulletins for radio broadcasts and read out for us to get information on say, water supply, old age pensions, health warnings during cyclones and so on. Movies which continue to exert a powerful influence on society in Tamil Nadu in those days did something noteworthy about using the diglossia. The protagonist and his love interest usually spoke literary Tamil, while the characters who provided comic relief used colloquial Tamil. Dramatic moments were marked by high-flown formal literary Tamil, as if to underscore the significance of the theme. The final scene, almost always a deus 
ex machina induced happy ending tended to have a previously negative character who had turned good and who delivered a comical line in colloquial tamil we went home from the movie theater theater in an exalted state having seen tragedy averted the rich semiotics of our diglossia creating images of good and evil subliminally in our subconscious minds using the potency of words the dichotomy between the written form of tamil and the spoken varieties which we can call st spoken tamil was and is huge if the written form can be seen as more or less a single kind of language this the spoken forms are numerous first there are the regional varieties the street tamil spoken in chennai for example is really strange to the ears of a new arrival say from tirunelveli at the intercity bus station then there is the caste affiliation and language varieties associated with groups of castes a counter farming in periyar districts speaks a tamil that sounds very different from a brahmin woman's tamil in tanjavur every tamil sp speaker carries markers of both region and caste in his or her speech more importantly spoken forms of tamil have their own rules of phonetics and morphology but not so much syntax as far as i know my observations are empirical and you are specialists i would be happy to be corrected all these rules of spoken tamil are transformations of rules that govern formal tamil lit lt which is used widely but not exclusively in written communication today i'd like to show some of the various phonetic transformations of one sentence um from uh, lt to st bear with me while i go to my file here it is the sentence at the end at the bottom is the literary tamil pengal aluvargal what i have given above are just five possible variations obviously i don't know all the regional variations and all the caste group markers so i am giving you just five which i know <clears throat> பெண்கள் அழுவார்கள் can sound as பொட்டச்சிக அழுவாளுவ பொட்டச்சிங்க அழுவாளுங்க perhaps in what shiftman calls standard spoken tamil பொம்பளங்க அழுவாளுங்க прошу прощения камакша мы не видим презентацию вот только букву выведем вы вы что-то показываете же да да а я У нас не видно. Вы еще раз. Подождите, подождите, постараюсь. А, как это сделать? Демонстрацию, um, демонстрацию экрана. Вот я вам права организатора дала, и вот вы должны сейчас нажать демонстрацию экрана и там включить ее. Демонстрацию share, да? Внизу там правильно, у вас. Правильно, 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 правильно. Share, share photo. Сейчас, сейчас. Извините, пожалуйста, пока я. Но мы пока видим найду. новую маленькую. Пока я найду эту вещь здесь. Так, вот сейчас вы Есть? Видите. Есть? Да, да. Сейчас видим. Да. Да. Ещё раз, пожалуйста, если можно. Вот. Значит, эм LT звучит так: Pengal Alwarhal. Literary Tamil А вот пять вариантов, которые я дала: Pottachiga Aluvaluva, Pottachinga Aluvalunga, Standard Spoken Tamil, как Шифман называет эту форму, Pombalanga Aluvalunga, дальше Pombalhalalla Aluva, 
கொமராட்டி எல்லாம் அழுவாள் புத் வஸ்மோஷ்ன மீனிமம் புத் ஸ்தோல்க வரியாந்தவ் политические варианты. А дальше я постараюсь вам представить, представить грамматические варианты. Просто для примеров. Вот. Видно? Конечно. Вот. Сейчас видно, да. Вот грамматические варианты здесь, такие возможные. Иранда Мадхаль Ирикиндрана. Разговорная форма. Ренда Мада Ирикида. Иранда Пенгаль Ирикиндрархаль. Разговорная форма. Ренда Пунданга Ирканга. Ренда Пунда Ирикида. இரண்டு பையன்கள் இருக்கின்றார்கள் ரெண்டு பையங்க இருக்காங்க ரெண்டு பசங்க இருக்காங்க ரெண்டு பசங்க இருக்குது வாஷ்ய Let's go back to 1969. Had I thought about any of those features of Tamil on that day when Ali, uh, um, uh, Anatoly Tsikhanovich led me into a classroom with seven students of Indology with Tamil as their main language? Obviously, no. Did I have anyone or any published authoritative materials to guide me about how one delivers lessons in the spoken form of Tamil? Again, no. I have heard it said by the greatest teachers of Russian language that any textbook is better than no textbook. Did I have a textbook? You guessed it. No. All I had to support me was that I was a native speaker of Tamil with a deep interest in language in general and a developing passion for Russian language as a student in the Citadel of Higher Education, Moscow State University. I spoke Brahmin Tamil with a clear Tanjavur flavor, which showed in my vocabulary, pronunciation, and some aspects of grammar. My mother used a great many sayings and proverbs in her day-to-day -day speech. We read magazines in Tamil and listened to Tamil language broadcasts at home. I had studied school level Tamil grammar and had chosen Tamil as my second language in college. The grammar I knew was descriptive. It was not taught as a tool to understand the mechanics of Tamil. But the most significant source of support I had was probably from a chance episode in my life when as a child of six, I went to live with my aunt's family in the small town of Sivagangai in Chetinadu. There, for two years during early schooling, I used uncontaminated Tamil for learning and talking with my friends <clears throat> and in the weekly market to buy palm sugar blocks. That's, I think, where I developed Tamil, a Tamil cultural identity and affinity for the rhythms of that sweet sing-song Chetinadu dialect. Those were small pluses. The minuses clearly outweighed the pluses. One, I had no idea of teaching language or teaching methodology. I had no notion of curricula, syllabi, or lesson plans. I didn't know about the direct method, immersion teaching, or translation method. But thankfully, for my students who were working towards their MA in Indology with Tamil as their main language, their professor for the formal linguistic and literary aspects of this language was Mr. Sobeliv, who worked at Moscow Radio 
if memory serves. He had compiled a book of snippets and articles and anecdotes and everything in between from Tamil periodicals such as Kalki, Ananda Vikatan, and such, <clears throat> which passed for a Tamil reader, like a Hrestamachya. I was to use this compendium of assorted reading to develop conversational skills. I guess I provided a good break for the students from the other demanding courses they were taking for their degrees. Most of the time, we enjoyed ourselves talking about this and that. My contribution was limited mostly to building vocabulary and explaining usage conventions, which included comments on aspects of syntax, collocation, and register, besides offering a cultural context where appropriate. My hope was that the learners would begin to recognize the alien sounds of my cherished Tamil, at least on radio programs. I got to make friends with senior students from a different faculty of the university. Expanding my circle of Russian speaking friends was a great gift to me. The greatest gift was having got to know Alexander Mikhailovich, who has become synonymous with Tamil studies in Russia. Allow me to conclude my talk in Tam in Russian. Yap Pamina Yusichas Zglubokri Radhistu is near Katram Udivlenium, Sto Adin Studiant, Stoy Group, Astal Samaim Dobrum Drugam, Dolgi Godi Posle May Universitetske Jizni v Moskvie. Eta Bol Alexander Mikhailovich Dubiansky. My Piripisovilis i Daja Strichalis Nespikaras Zaiti Godi. Мой ученый и душевный друг Саша, как я его называла, всегда любезно признавал мой вклад в его глубокую любовь к тамильскому языку и даже после того, как покинул нас, создал возможность возобновить мою связь с изучением тамильского языка в России. По теплому приглашению Николая Валентиновича Гордячука мне удалось в настоящее время принимать участие онлайн на занятиях по тамильскому языку как иностранному. У, у меня такое ощущение, что я вернулась к духовному своему дому, где началась моя преподавательская жизнь. I thank the organizers, the chair of this session, Olga Pavlovna, and Tatiana Alexandrovna, who is Tanya to me, and Nikolai Val Valentinovich, who is Kolya to me, for this unique opportunity to be part of this day of celebratory homage to the memory of Alexander Mikhailovich Dubyansky, who is a most cherished friend and is always Sasha to me. Thank you for your patience and attention. Дорога Камакши, большое спасибо за ваше чудесное выступление. Необычайно интересное. Дорогие коллеги, если у кого-то есть вопросы какие-то, комментарии, пожалуйста. Вот тут Пишут в чате сердечное спасибо. Но я тогда чуть-чуть прокомментирую немножко загадочно прозвучащие последние слова, потому что э, мы продолжаем как бы занятие, но на такой уже э, вне университетской основе. Вот как раз у нас э, Николай Валентинович, э, как продолжатель дела Александра Михайловича, продолжает обучать э, Тамильскому, в том числе э, и современному, и древнему. И вот Камакша любезно согласилась участвовать в наших таких вот посиделках как раз на тех занятиях, где мы занимаемся ну, как бы современным тамильским, но таким классическим, литературно, литературным тамильским, неразговорным. Я ощущу себя надеждой, что может быть удастся когда-нибудь разговорным. Можно я пока? Так, простите, кто-то хочет еще выступить, я не поняла.